So I don't know if you know, but uh, the United States, when we bomb people, we do it with Christian bombs. <laughs> Uh, that are made by good Christians, and when they explode, they don't hurt anyone. They hug people to death. We we often bomb hospitals, right? Hey, look, uh, did Afghan troops manipulate the U.S. into bombing doctors without borders? Wait a minute, did we really do that? Do, do countries think we do that? I don't know, there's 80 of them. habit of bombing hospitals but we're better than the terrorists just keep that in mind don't ever forget that we're set because when we're doing it it's to be nice but the US military admits we deliberately bombed a hospital in Iraq here's another one Pentagon US bombing of Afghan hospital not a war crime that's the beauty when we do it not a war crime it's an oopsie even if we bomb it for an hour straight. Even as the hospital is calling the U.S. military and telling them you're bombing a hospital, stop it. And they keep doing it. For an hour, bombing a hospital. Not a bomb someone plants in a hospital, but continuous bombing. <laughs> bombing, bombing in a hospital. That's what we do. We're, we're, we're better. We're better than the people we're fighting. Just keep that in mind. We're better. Because we're doing it for good, re unselfish reasons. It's not for oil. So, yeah. So, we, when we bomb a hospital, it's not a war crime. Keep that in mind. Okay? So, when somebody cuts off someone's head with a, with a kitchen knife, that is a war crime. Reuters, this is from Reuters Today. It says, uh, today being March 22nd, 2017, airstrikes kill more than 30 near Raqqa. Hmm. An airstrike that hit a school sheltering displaced people near the Islamic State-held Syrian city of Raqqa killed at least 33 people. <laughs> a school sheltering displaced people I wonder who did that I bet there was horrible terrorists who would bomb a school where they're sheltering people terrorists that's who does that kind of thing terrorists the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said it believed the strike was carried out by US led coalition god damn it then it's okay, because we did it, right? So what's, I'm, no one's going to make us think about it, right? Isn't it kind of crazy? As long as we can keep using bombs, I think. So as long as we can buy more planes and drop more bombs and everyone makes more money, right? Halliburton and everybody, and then the surveillance state and all that stuff. Everybody keeps making billions and billions and billions of dollars. We're carrying out a war... In someone else's country, I don't remember us having a vote to go to war in Syria. In fact, I remember when we did, we voted against it. President Barack Obama speaks out on Syria, telling the world he's going to formally ask Congress to approve military action. After careful deliberation, I have decided that the United States should take military action against Syrian regime targets. <laughs> We do not want another war because the only person who wins in war is ExxonMobil and the big corporations, the people always lose. We fight, we die, they win. I want people to understand that we do not need a war in Syria. The war in Syria is a hoax, just like the war in Iraq was a hoax under Bush. The war in Syria is a hoax under Obama. Unfortunately, the mass media here is with corporate America, so Americans don't know what's happening. If they knew, they would have stopped. Have we not learned anything from our involvement in Iraq and Afghanistan, just, Afghanistan, just to name two recent examples? It's ludicrous. Um, ultimately, I do not want any intervention anymore in the Middle East. All wars are lies, and uh, I've been there firsthand to see it, and it's not good. But I just want to go back to the headline again. 
because it says airstrike kills more than 30 near rocket. But if you look at the top, I, you, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to read to you what it says. British Prime Minister says we have seen a sick and depraved attack in London. That's above this headline, airstrike kills 30 in rocket at the hospital. But what they did in London is sick. And yeah, it is sick. But but this is okay. Not a war crime. Oops, oopsie. The West has set the fucking Mideast on fire. It's okay. Iraq, complete, complete war of aggression. Complete war crime. No problem, Ski. But that person with a knife outside Parliament, sick. This whole story is part of a very unhappy record of British relations in the Middle East. His honorable friend is going to raise again on Friday. This Gulf War, looked at in the light of what we now know, was a war for profit, a war for oil, and a war for the control of the area. And now we are suddenly told that ministers who protested so vigorously about their defense of democracy and human rights were selling weapons to Saddam Hussein. But I was in London in the Blitz in 1940, living in the Millbank Tower where I was born. Every morning I saw Dockland burning, 500 people were killed in Westminster one night by a landmine. It was terrifying. Aren't Arabs terrified? Aren't Iraqis terrified? Don't I Arab and Iraqi women weep when their children die? Doesn't bombing strengthen their determination? What fools we are to live in a generation for which war is a computer game for our children and just an interesting little channel for news item. September the 11th was a dreadful event. 8,000 deaths in Afghanistan brought back none of those who died in the World Trade Center. Thousands more deaths in Iraq will not make things right. It will set off a spiral of conflict, of hate, of misery, of desperation that will fuel the wars, the conflict, the terrorism, the depression and the misery of future generations. Many of us have been utterly consistent about the bombing of Libya. This is not a solution. It's not the right thing to do. It's not the right way forward. Western involvement brought about most of the problems. We arm them, we supply them, we profit from them, and we happily consort with them. The hypocrisy, the stench of hypocrisy, is something that gets on my nerves beyond belief. Whether it's a lack of strategy worth the name, the absence of credible ground troops, the missing diplomatic plan for a Syrian settlement, the failure to address the impact of the terrorist threat or the refugee crisis and civilian casualties, it's becoming increasingly clear that the Prime Minister's proposals for military action simply do not stack up. Bombs exported from Britain are being dropped on Yemeni children by Saudi pilots trained by Britain. Isn't it about time this government suspended its arms sales to Saudi Arabia? Yeah.